What's going on, everybody? Peace and uh, blessings to everybody that's tuning in. Uh, definitely want to uh, bring some, present something to you that's quite interesting. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, and I think you guys appreciate this all the way around the board. Uh, some of the information here. But this is definitely interesting. So I want to show you something. Uh, and I've been blessed to be able to have brothers and sisters in the Christian community who keep me posted on certain things going on within the Christian church. Uh, I'm, I myself do as well. And I think that this is... Uh, Something that's that's kind of kind of ironic and very important. Uh, again, as we say, um, interesting to see how uh, the Most High has His hand in everything. He has His hand in everything, and so let's check this out. Um, this is not only uh, this is a dual uh, situation. I'm, I'm going to get into this here in, in a quick minute. Or why this is important. Uh, it's going to help you as far as with the mindset of the Torah, but it's also going to help you in some other areas as well that I think our mindsets need to kind of change uh, about a lot of things. Um, that way we can kind of move towards a better situation. So, Kind of want to bring some information out. Um, this is going to definitely help you uh, in a lot of areas. Uh, we're going to look at some things uh, from the Torah. Uh, it, it's all in this one video, and I want y'all to see this in this video. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, uh, Bishop? Happy anniversary, man. Hope y'all had a great time. Look like y'all had a great time out there uh, in, in Destin, Florida. Um, look like y'all definitely enjoyed y'all selves. Uh, had, a, had a good time out there, so... Uh, blessings to you as well. I love you, man. Um, big shout out to everybody that's tuning in right now. Um, I'm going to give brothers and sisters a channel to get on. What's going on, Abiyah? Uh, Sister Kaya, uh, Minister Casey, uh, Sister Terry, what's going on? Shalom, Deacon Riddick. Uh, Badadaya, what's going on? Uh, Brother Daniel, what's going on? Rubel, what's up, cuz? Um, Stephen, what's going on? Shalom, what's going on? Shalom, Otis Banks. Uh, Shalom. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Definitely, definitely. I'm glad y'all did, man. It was much needed. It was definitely much needed. Definitely much needed. Um, so I want to show y'all something. This is this this was something that was recently um this year. Um I think it may be like two months ago. Uh, it was something this year at New Birth. Um, something this year at New Birth. Uh, Shalom, Minister Casey. Uh, something at New Birth, uh, Dr. Jamal Bryant uh, had brought a brother in. Um, and I, wanna, I want y'all to check this out, man. And see, <laughs> you know, sometimes, man, you, you have to be wise, man, and... And how you do things. And the father is always into making sure that his people, um, you know, are informed in many ways. And sometimes he does things to spark uh, a thought, uh, plant a seed uh, or whatnot. Um, this was not the platform uh, for like going into something else other than what it was. This was like a financial uh, type of seminar type situation. But. I saw how he injected some things um, that he had to be wise in how he did it in order to be make sure that the people were informed of their identity and who they are. And so the thing is, I need the, the, the thing is that we have to begin to do is we have to begin to listen with intent. Don't allow cold words or certain terms to throw you off of not listening with intent of actually what is being said. Because when you're speaking to a, a, a wide variety of people, everybody's knowledge level, education level, and spiritual level are at different levels. And so you want to be able to make sure that 
you inform the people all while at the same time uh, making sure that um, you give leave a nugget or something that they can think about. That way they can also add it to where they are. Because the point he's trying to make in this video is who you are and why you shouldn't be in the situation that you're in and why you should change your mindset. Okay. So I want y'all to check this out. We're going to get into this video. What's going on, brother Dwayne? Shalom, brother Kennard. Uh, I think uh, uh, Rabbi Stansberry, I think he's on here as well. Uh, Shalom, Rabbi Stansberry. My good brother, Sebastian. What's going on, Pastor? How you doing, man? Uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. One day, Lord's willing, we can link up and kind of get together on some things. Uh, and so I want y'all to check this out, man, because I think it's very important that we understand and change our mindset as believers and understanding who we are. But also when it comes to finances and we have to change our mind about where we're at and how we do things. I think our foreparents understood the value of certain things and that's why they held on to so certain things like land and property and things of that nature. They understood those things and how important they were um, and they passed those things down. But somewhere within the generations of the younger and the millennial mindset, um, I think sometimes um, we got into this this thing of trying to ball out and not understanding the value of holding on to things. But I want y'all to check this out and listen to this. Um, but again, I want y'all to hear this and we're going to come back to revisit. I won't be on here long because I got to kind of got to kind of got to run. But I want y'all to listen with intent. OK, listen with intent. And that way you can un and hear the things that's being said within this uh, this particular lesson. So this is let me set the stage for you. Those who are just joining, this was a I guess financial seminar at um, New Birth, like about two months ago, when Dr. Jamal Bryant brought this brother in. Okay, and uh, one of the one of my uh, uh, Christian pastor uh, friends or whatnot, a brothers um, and, and, and elders in the Christian community, he hit me up. He, he sent this. He said, I know you'll love this. Check it out. I want you to listen to what it said. He said, when I heard it, I was like, wait a minute, let me go back. And so, you know, it's just a blessing to be able to be uh, have eyes and ears out here within the Christian community um, of certain things that's kind of being going on. You would be surprised a lot of the conversation and talk that goes on in the in that community but if you detach from that community, you don't you don't understand or hear the type of conversations that they do have pertaining certain to historical things. Everybody in there is not dumb to the fact of uh, or, or you believe they're dumb. They don't know who they are. They do. Um, it's just that there are certain doctrinal things uh, and each one has a different doctrinal position that they may not agree uh, with each other as well as with Israel on. Uh, but by no stretch of the imagination that they, a lot of these brothers are educated and done their research. They know many of them just don't feel like they're called to teach it or don't know enough of it to teach it, to answer questions. But that's neither here nor there. That's another thing. I want y'all to check this out and listen to this. And then we're going to go from there. All right. Check it out. Create this opportunity for tonight. Um, Chris Boyd over at Word of Faith. Uh, created an opportunity for me to speak there a number of years ago at the Economic Empowerment Conference with T.D. Jakes and Pastor Paula White and a whole bunch of notoriety, big name speakers. I had did a piece there called There Are No More Jobs in uh, 2011. The church called back a couple of weeks ago and said that they wanted to recreate that No More Jobs. They wanted to do an update to No More Jobs. And so I called Michael Roberts, who has been a heavy influence on my entrepreneurial career. I called George Frazier. I called a number of other people that we work with through the Black Speakers Bureau, and they put on this event at the church. And some kind of way through Hashim and Zynga, um, Quincy calls on me to come here tonight. So through a series of odd events, we get here tonight to present to you this information that I, I believe is life-changing. I think to be broke is, is an abomination. And, and matter of fact, if you if you read the Jewish benevolent law, and I'm not trying to push Judaism, but if you read it. Okay, let's stop right there. From this point on, he's already established he's not pushing Judaism, which we understand that the 
ancient Israelites. And what we know today is Judaism is two different things. So from this point, when you hear the word Jew, you understand that he's already established the difference between an Israelite or the biblical Israelite and the Jew, okay, of modern day. So I just want to lay that foundation. He didn't get a chance to say that, but I just want y'all to understand this is what he's doing when he's making this distinction, okay, between the two. So now you can listen and receive what's being said so you don't think he's talking about Judaism, okay? Now, let's roll. In the Torah, Jews believe that it's an abomination to be a tenant. They got rules on how long you should be renting. So in the Torah, he's dealing with the Torah. Now, all of us who understand, especially if you're an Israelite, you know that a lot of the foundation, we do believe in Christ, but we do still pay attention as well as culturally, not religiously, culturally adheres to the Torah when it comes down to our cultural customary context. All right. So let's get this understood. Now, let's listen to what he says. So he established the Torah. He said, if you go back to the Torah, which we should be paying attention to. OK, listen to what he says. The rules only go for 36 months. Now, he says in the Torah, he says, go back to the Torah. But then now he says Jews believe that you should only rent for 36 months. Now, we know that it doesn't say that specifically in the Torah. So he's he's talking about the Torah, which we know was written by the ancient Israelites. But he's saying the modern day Jews follow the principles of what's in the Torah that was written by ancient Israelites. So there they have established that you should only rent so long, okay, which is not in the Torah when it comes down to the 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 uh, exact uh, of his presentation of what he's saying. All right, but y'all get the point. Let's roll. My mom is still in New York renting. She's been at the same spot for 47 years. I love you, mom. I know you're watching, but you've been paying 1500 a month for 47 years. 1500 a month, the last time I calculated was $60,000 times 47 years is over a million five that she's given to Albanians and Jews and other people outside of our community. But the Jews believe that it's an abomination to be a tenant. That's in their Bible. That's in their religion. Now, Casey, you, you're absolutely correct. All right. You're absolutely correct on that. Of course, when they deal with that, a lot of the oral stuff. Um, but listen to this. He's basically saying the principle of the Torah is, is that if you are a Israelite based on the Torah, you are supposed to be the lender and not the borrower. You're supposed to be the head and not the tail. That's basically the concept that he's presenting here. Okay. He's talking to a predominantly black audience. All right. We ain't even gotten to the things he's going to, he's setting the stage. Okay. For this. Yes, this is about finances, but at the same time, he's point, he's going to show you why you shouldn't be broke as black people because you are the people in the scriptures, okay? I want y'all to listen to this, all right? I want y'all to listen to this. this. I mean, this is it's, it's not so much just about Israel, but let's get into it. I'm going to let him talk, and I'll break it down for you, okay? That's what they believe. It's, a, it's an abomination. They also believe that you got to own land. Black man has to own land. Wait a minute. I want, I'm going to stop right there. He says they also believe that the, that because this is written by ancient Israelites, that the black, that, that you should own land and the black man should own land. This is a parallel comparison to black people should be on land, which our ancestors, my big mama, them two generations ago, believed in having property. That owning land and those certain things were, were extremely valuable. If you start talking about, talk to some of these people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. My ancestors and my wife's ancestors, they still own acres of land. Acres. They will not sell it. They will die and pass it and will it on to somebody else and will tell you 
do not sell because they understood biblically that you should be owning land, your own property. Don't sell it for nothing. If people come to you and tell you, I'm a, I'll give you $100,000 for that, for that acre. That means that that value is probably worth $300,000. So you always know that it's going to double and triple sell for what they bought it from you for because the value of it is that important. This is the biblical cultural mindset of the Israelites based on the people who wrote the Bible. Those who wrote the Bible Israel, we know that. That's common sense. Okay, but let's keep rolling here. Let's listen to this. Jamal's in Baltimore before he came down here. Freddie Gray situation. Let's just think about this. Not to get all political on you before we get into what it is that we got to teach tonight. But let's think about this. When you own land, right, where do your taxes go? Where do your real estate taxes go? They go to two places. Now, I'm going to stop right here. I want y'all to I, listen. If you're not listening, I need you to listen right now what he's about to say next. If you want to solve the problem, the Bible has all the problem solvers. We just aren't applying it. We become more religious in our presentation of the Bible than cultural as well as customary. We become more religious with them. That's why we view it and we argue over, is the law done away with? Is the law done? For the ancient Israelite, this was a cultural customary thing. It was not religious. The same way we have laws today, Drive, no, not running the red light, uh, uh, not robbing somebody. All of these things are customary cultural things. It's not a religion not to run a red light. It's not a religion to not steal from somebody. Okay? So let's look at this and let's deal with this from a cus. If we change our perspective of the Bible and who the mo and who God is or who Yah is, we'll get an understanding of how to actually live and be prosperous. Within the custom, because in, within the custom in which we have, his spirit is within the custom because his because uh, the custom came from him. So it's a spirit thing, not a religious thing. OK, now let's look at this here. They go for education and law enforcement. Listen to this. Education, law enforcement. If black folks own land, they will be paying real estate taxes to who? Law enforcement. They'd have a relationship with who? Law enforcement. There would be no need or ability for somebody to run up in the hood and shoot you five times in the back because you would have a what? Relationship with law enforcement. In fact, I believe that if we really wanted to get serious about stopping folks from shooting us in the back five and six, seven, eight times, every black man under the sound of my voice in America would be overinsured for five, ten million dollars. So the next time they shoot you in the back five, ten times, guess what? Somebody got to pay. It's all right there. It's all there. Let's keep going. But of course, I know y'all can't receive because this is a Christian. Y'all can't receive nothing because this y'all Israelites can't receive nothing because it's a Christian talking. Let me tell you something. The most high speak through a donkey to give your behind some wisdom. You better listen. Stop listening from a religious possession. I'm not religious. I'm yes, you are. Because you should be able to hear the spirit of the most high trying to give you wisdom in some area. Chew the meat up and spit out the bones. You have to learn how to chew the meat and spit out the bones. And you have to be able to recognize when wisdom is talking in the earth. I don't care what it's coming from. Because the most high use anything to get something to you, to help you say, to help uh, uh, get your behind out of a lot of trouble and keep you from going into a lot of trouble. Okay, let's keep rolling. Listen. Trump himself would issue an edict, stop shooting Negroes. Think about this. It's all about finances. It's the economy of God. And when we get into the economy of God, we think about Jesus Christ, the master. There's only a few accounts in the book. Listen to this. I want y'all to listen to this. Now you're going to drop a nugget. Listen to this. That I know that Christ acted outside of himself. What are those accounts, class? There's a number of accounts, but one one comes to mind in the temple of the holies of holies. And the account says 
that the Hebrew shekel coin, which was supposed to be five dollars, got hyperinflated. Listen to this. By the money changers. These dudes was outside the temple. They was inflating the money. And it says Christ got angered. Now, let's think about this class. Christ got angered over what? He got angered because the money changes inflated the money so that the black Jews. Wait, hold, wait, hold, 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 hold. Did you hear what he just said? Now, the brother been dropping nuggets throughout the whole for the last 10 minutes. And it finally slipped out. I want y'all to listen to this. This is what I'm telling y'all, man. Did you hear what the brother just said? Now, he got the people's attention. He can't drop all of it on them at one time because he ain't trying to destroy the people. And the most high in his wisdom, you just don't drop it all on the people at one time. No. You just can't drop all that. That's what I'm trying to tell, brother. See, you got to use wisdom and understanding how the most high reach people. There's so many different people in their, so in their intellect level and their spirit level and all these different things. He had been building up, building up, building up, and then he just dropped the name. He got the people in. Now he dropped the nugget on him. Boom. Let me jump on this and let me jump off. I can't stay on that too long because the people ain't going to understand. And I ain't trying to kill him. I'm trying to get something to him while at the same time using the finances to drop a nugget of ethnicity on him. I'm going to run it back. Think about this. It's all about finances. It's the economy of God. And when we get into the economy of God, we think about Jesus Christ, the master. There's only a few accounts in the book that I know that Christ acted outside of himself. What are those accounts, class? There's a number of accounts, but one, one comes to mind in the temple of the holies of holies. Now, what is it about? 17,000 people up in there right now? <laughs> Pastor Sebastian say, this brother is woke and using wisdom and considering who he's talking to and what they need to, and what they need, where they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, if he used wisdom correctly, then the next time he comes, he's gained the trust of the leadership. Okay? He's gained the trust of the leadership. Then the next time they ask him to come back, he can sprinkle a little more on there. And say, well, okay, last time I dropped this on there about the black Jews. But now let me just go in a little deeper to why they were mistreating them this way and why they hacked up the taxes on them the way they did. Then he can go in a little more and drop a little more knowledge in there. But if you go up in there bum rushing the doggone leadership, telling them what they ain't teaching, what they need to teach, and all this other kind of stuff, you ain't going to get the most high going to say, you know what, you ain't learned yet. Go sit down somewhere. You're trying to kill and destroy the people. I'm trying to make you as a witness, and you're trying to go in here acting a fool. You ain't ready yet. Because at the end of the day, people listen to their leader. And if their leaders is saying, I co-sign this brother, then the most I open up an opportunity for you to be able to reach the people even more. But if you're going to act in a fool and tell them, yeah, well, I, this is my only opportunity. How do you know this is your only opportunity? You don't know that. The most I gave you an opportunity now. But this ain't the time for you to act a fool. Listen, to, let's keep rolling. And the account says... That the Hebrew shekel coin, which was supposed to be five dollars, got hyperinflated by the money changers. These dudes was outside the temple; they was inflating the money. And it says Christ got angered. Now let's think about this, class. Christ got angered over what? He got angered because the money changers inflated the money so that the black Jews, because they was black folks at the time. Oh look! Oh oh okay. All right. Okay, all right, all right. But this is in New Birth. Jamal, first of all, we already know New Birth has had a decline, right? Before, when, when they was looking for past, they lost probably about 10,000 people, okay? They lost about 10,000 people. All of a sudden, Jamal Bryant comes back, the church packed out from top to bottom. It probably holds about 20,000 people. This brother just dropped the seed on 20,000 people. How many people have you dropped the seed on? 
How many people have you dropped the seed on? But he didn't come in there as a gunslinger acting a fool. He's giving the people a financial education, meanwhile giving them an ethnos education. Giving them an ethnic education on who the people were in Jerusalem during the time of Hamashiach. And these folks put inflation on black folks who were Israelites. Now, guess what? He got the hearts of the people. He got their ears. So what he just said, uh, the seed that he just planted fell on soil and not concrete. Because he didn't come out saying, you know, you're the people of the book, right? Where you at on this chart? He didn't say that. He came in as a, it's a financial seminar. So within that, wisdom allows him to create an opportunity to be able to give people a historical background as well as getting them an understanding this is why you should you should own land because you're an Israelite or you're quote unquote black Jew because why? because the people during the time in Jerusalem during the time of Christ they were black folks and inflation was put on them this is what I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help y'all, man. I be I, I, I hear, I, I, I talk to a lot of Christian pastors. I hear some of the things that maybe y'all don't hear them preaching on. Maybe even their members don't even hear them preaching on Sunday. And what they talk about. And why they don't discuss certain things. These folks know more than you think. And the thing is, a lot of them are using wisdom. I'm not, I can't sit up here and say all of them are deceiving. There are some out there that just don't want, that they're just not even going to consider it. But there are many out there who know, but yet they don't know how to present it properly. And that's where the most I can use you in a relationship with them to be able to present it. However that works out, but it has to be, there has to be a level of wisdom when they go, now you talk about you dealing with people that has a certain mindset of who they are for 60 plus years. It didn't take overnight for them to get that mindset. And so you have to chip away a little bit at a time, have to deal with certain things a little bit at a time and then go from there. But let's, 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 let's look at this real quick and then I'm, I'm going to be done, man. I'm going to be done. Let me see if I can get it back to the spot. What are those accounts, class? There's a number of accounts, but one, one comes to mind. I'm not going to stop it anymore after this. the of, of holies. And the account says that the Hebrew shekel coin, which was supposed to be $5, got hyperinflated by the money changers. These dudes was outside the temple. They was inflating the money. And it says Christ got angered. Now, let's think about this, class. Christ got angered over what? He got angered because the money changes inflated the money so that the black Jews, because they was black folks at the time, to make them pay more to enter into the temple to pray to their God. And the account says what? They turn tables over. They bust people in the head over the matter of black economics. This is Jesus Christ, man. Somebody who's in check of his emotions. He got angered. So my question, class, before we begin is why are we not angry about our financial position in America right now? Where's that, that holy unrest about our condition as black people? Where are we at as Christians, as black men in America? Where are we at over the condition of our finances? Where are we, class? So I didn't come here to, uh, you know, throw nobody under no bus. I love y'all. I really do, man. I love black people, man. But it's time that we stop playing these games with our economics. It's time that we stop allowing people who don't look like us. This ain't a racist, isolationist talk. It's time to stop these people from coming into our community and absorbing all the resources. Facts. Facts. Everything the brother said from the start of his presentation is absolutely fact. Fact. And so we have to change our mentality, man. 
Even when it comes down to the Deuteronomy 28 curses, we act as though we just totally forgotten verse 1 through 14. We've actually, act, we've actually forgotten about the financial economical position within the Torah. As though we're just supposed to be identified by being broke. This is a mentality we got to change, man. You think you are more righteous because you broke. Are you crazy? It don't make you more righteous because you're rich or you're broke. But at the same time, I, there should, you shouldn't have a mentality that you don't want to do nothing. You don't want to go nowhere. You don't want to spend no money or you don't want to invest or you don't want to have no money because of the mindset that, oh, and if I have me a, a nice house or a nice car, then uh, I'm going to worry about Israel saying that I'm wicked. It's all throughout the Torah, man. You can't be a lender if you broke. And this, this is not about any type of uh, prosperity gospel or anything of that nature. But I'm telling you right now, you cannot be a lender. And all type of folk in Israel, King David, Solomon, I mean, we can name them all, Noah, all these folks, we can go Job, we can go all the way down the list. Folks weren't broke, man. We got to stop there, change our mentality, man. Change our way of thinking with that. And so at the end of the day, man, I just want to show y'all, present this to y'all from that position. Of some of the things that he was bringing out in this presentation. This was at new birth this year. And the people received it. Absolutely, Pastor Sebastian. That's a fact. And especially if you say you 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 keeping Torah. If you say you keeping Torah and you got a mindset that you don't supposed to have nothing. Come on, man. Come on. And then we'll quote scripture, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just and all this other stuff. And yet you still thinking. And we talk about an oppressive mindset or we start talking about a um, uh, oppressive mindset as well as a uh, um, what's the other word that kept what they be using? Uh, uh, not not a slave mindset. It's a it's another term that we be using. Um, uh, man, I can't think of the name of cognitive dissonance and all these other words and stuff like that. And the same people using that are the same people that aren't even being an example. You say you keeping Torah to the T all day. Yeah, I walk Torah out and da da da. But yet, come on, man, look, look at your, look how you living, and look at the things that you teaching. To me, we have to change the, the mindset from being a religious people to a customary, um, what's the other word? A cultural people. Stop viewing the Bible as a religion. Because when you do that, that's why people arguing and debating over religious stuff. You arguing and debating over religious stuff. This thing was, okay, you live this type of way. This is what it is. If you keep these commandments, if you keep these customs, you shall be blessed over every nation of the earth. And your brother said, yeah, I'm keeping them. But where's the, where is the example of the blessings in your life? Because if you're keeping them, we should see an example and a demonstration of that. If you are keeping those, but your mind state hasn't changed, you still dealing with an economy. Brother still was I, brother still was working in the scriptures, even in the New Testament. Peter and all them had a lucrative fishing business and still keeping the law. You can have a lucrative business and still keep the customs and live customary. Change your mind. Set from being religious and to understand this is a custom and a culture. 
The same way you keep the customs of America when it comes out of their laws, it's the same thing with the Most High. It's a custom thing. Not a religious thing, a customary cultural perspective. How you trade, how you live, how you treat one another, how you do all of these things is based upon the custom. And if you say you are part of the kingdom of the most high and you're not following this, 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 this book, customary but religious, you're missing it. Everybody missing it, if that's the case. That's why he said, I'm going to put it on your heart. Because that's not a religious thing. When you have something upon your heart, you don't love your wife religiously. You don't love your husband religiously. It's a part of your being, your everyday life. The way you love your spouse and love your children. You don't do that religiously. It's in you. It's a part of you. It's on your heart. You don't need nobody to tell you to love your spouse and love your children. It's on your heart. So beloved, I just want to drop that on y'all, man. And definitely I will try, um, get a chance to post the link. Uh, I, if anybody want the link, man, just inbox me. I'll send them the link. I ain't gonna put, I'm not going to put it on my page because people just, they don't get it. They, I, I put it on my post. They, they still going to try to Make it out of something more than what it is. So if you want the link, man, just inbox me. I'll shoot you the link to the whole live, I mean, to the whole uh, sermon that was at uh, New Birth. And that way you can be able to check it out for yourself. Uh, but definitely, if you're just not tuning in, go back and watch the beginning of this video. Uh, we broke down the specific subject and uh, and go from there, man. But uh, def definitely check it out, man. All right. Shalom to you all. Bless to you all. Have a wonderful, great, wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com uh, forward slash uh, it's majors number one. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube uh, as well as don't forget if you're in Jacksonville, Florida, we will have service this Saturday um, as well as on Sunday. If you're in Atlanta, we'll have Boom Atlanta is going to have a family fellowship day. We're going to be out there fishing and having uh, playing some cards and lunch and it's going to be at 11 o'clock. Uh, at, at the uh, park, uh, the post is on my, um, the directions on my page. What's going on? Um, uh, what's going on, Bishop Cedric Penn? What's going on with you, man? Uh, blessings to you as well. All the pastors, all the uh, mores and all uh, Israel, and if you're a Christian or whatever, blessings to all y'all, man, for tuning in. Uh, this definitely should be something that definitely encourage and educate everybody. All right. Love all y'all with the love of Christ, man. Love of Hamashiach, and I'll holler at y'all later on. Shalom.